Now, it's not just banks, of course, that are going to suffer financially thanks to George Osborne's new plans. The cutbacks are so vast that they are sure to touch every aspect of British life. But will there be gain after all that pain? Well, for more analysis, I'm joined now by John Gee, a former Bank of England Deputy Governor and Financial Stability Chief. Thank you very much for uh, joining us here on The Pulse. If we can just look at some of those headlines after um, the, uh, the spending review talked about what a gamble this was for the UK. You know, we don't know quite what the welfare bill will be or what interest rates will be. Is this a big gamble that George Osborne's taking? Well, what he did um, in the last few days is to deliver the detail mm. on the budget that he, that he pronounced in June. So, if you like, the only macro decision he took was not to soften that set of numbers he announced mm. in the early summer. And I can understand that because, um, having said he's going to make a big impact on the deficit, I think it would have looked weak and weak to markets and politically then to say, oh, well, maybe we're drawing back. So in that sense, it's not a new gamble. Mm -hmm. but, um, but is it still a gamble? Well, it, you know, the deficit reduction depends on the economy growing from now on in and the recovery continuing. And that looks a bit less certain now than it looked in the summer. It also perhaps looks more likely that the Bank of England role is going to be more important in making that happen. Is QE now more important than ever? Well, with interest rates where they are, mm. and the fiscal policy set, mm -hmm. <coughs> and regulatory policy tightening, <laughs> there ain't nothing else really, to do, there's yeah. no other game in town. If the economy is faltering or falters, mm. then really QE2 has to be is the only tool we've got. Now, I think my own view is that it's not clear that the the economy is faltering, mm -hmm. and it seems quite likely to me that the recovery will continue. But there's no doubt that there's more worry about that than there was a few months ago. So you don't think that November <clears> is going to be the time that we'll see the QE2 being injected? Do you think they're going to wait a little bit longer? Well, in, in, in big terms, mm. QE2 is what the Fed are going to do. And I think everyone would be amazed now, mm. after all that's been said, if they don't restart sure. their QE program. So the real question is, does, uh, does the Bank of England follow on a day later? Mm or does it wait for a bit more evidence on how the economy is going? Mm. Um, I think I'd be voting for uh, giving it a bit more time, but of course I haven't seen the Bank of England's new forecast, which they're looking at at the moment. Mm. So it'll be very much driven by their view on whether the uh, output is going to grow under its own steam, mm. if you like well enough over the next two years. Uh, what is quite interesting at the moment is this relationship between Mervyn King and George mm. Osborne. I mean, Mervyn King uh, has already said that he endorsed the deficit cutting measures. Um, it is of course the Bank of England policy committee is supposed to be very uh, very much separate but do you think there is slightly more of an American Fed like role where there's a little bit more of an interest in social policy than perhaps there was? Well, I don't think Mervyn's um, endorsed the detail, that, if you like, the political choices on how to cut the deficit. He, he just said that he, was, mm -hmm. he, he thought that someone needed to get a firm grip on it. Mm. Um, this is very interesting. When I was on the MPC, I never got rung up by the Treasury and encouraged to vote this way or that way. In that sense, and I'm sure that remains the case, it mm -hmm. is entirely independent. But the fact is, when you're in a hole, you've got to look at fiscal policy, regulatory policy and interest rate policy at the same time. And of course, with the fiscal policy being tightened and therefore being a drag on activity, mm. the bank is bound to respond to that to some degree yeah. on the other side. George Osborne is in a sense dependent on uh, the Bank of England to do the right thing in this situation, isn't he? Well, I mean, we're all dependent on, on the <laughs> bank doing the right thing. The, 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 the real question is, uh, firstly, is the, are private sector spirits getting better quick enough mm to offset the effects of the fiscal contraction or do they need a big boost? And then the second question is, could QE really deliver an effective boost? Well, that's what Alistair Darling has been asking, isn't it? Uh, do you think that it actually it would get to the places that it's needed? Well, I think that the first round of QE probably did have an impact on longer-term interest rates and asset prices. But how far that really fed through into higher investment and consumption isn't so clear. I think a second round would have some impact, but probably not as much as the first round. And uh, this may be a diminishing effect mm. over time. Now, 
You said back in August that uh, you thought that interest rates would, would hold low until the end of the year and then perhaps rise quite quickly. Uh, do you think that it's more likely that they're going to stay lower for longer after this? Well, since I said that, the the evidence on activity has been a bit weaker. Mm. So obviously that's pointing to lower interest rates. The point I, I, I'd make though, and I still hold to, is if this turns out to be uh, just noise in the data and the recovery continues as it usually does after a recession, mm. then actually we will see interest rates rise faster than people are currently discounting. But of course there, there are several ifs in that. Indeed. John Gee, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Nice to see you.